Okay class, today we're going to be doing graphing parabolas. So if I have a parabola that's going up or down, I know that the working form of that equation looks like what? You should be very familiar with this because this is what we did for a quadratic. So the working form of that equation is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Now my vertex is always my what? It's the same as the hyperbola and the ellipse. It's going to be my h and my k. Now to determine whether or not it opens up or down, it opens up if a is greater than 0 and down if a is less than 0, which simply means if my a is negative, it's going to open downward. And don't forget that my line of sym symmetry is always going to go through my vertex, so it's going to be whatever my x is, so x is going to equal h. Now, if I have a parabola that's going side to side, and you're probably less familiar with these because we dealt more with the parabolas going up and down, then my vertex working equation is going to, my x and my y switch as spots. So I'm going to have x equals a y minus k squared plus h. So my x and y change spots. What else change spots? My k and my h. Now, my vertex still remains my h and my k. And if a is greater than 0, it's going to open to the right. And if it's less than 0, it's going to open to the left. So that's the only difference here for our quadratics because we weren't used to them going side to side. And my line of symmetry, they're going to both switch spots as well. It's going to be y equals k. So let's look at the two examples be below. So if I have a parabola below and the a value is going to be either 1 or negative 1, meaning it won't be a 2 or a 3, which means it's not going to stretch or compress, then I want you to be able to look at this and tell what it did. This one is flipped downward, so I know it's going to be a negative 1. Now let's look at the points here. I know that my quadratic equation is about here, right? So I know this shifted 3 to the right. And because it shifted 3 to the right, I know that my h value is going to change to what? That's correct, m minus 3. Now, it didn't shift up or down, so I don't have a k value. So if that confuses you, remember you can write it as plus 0 to understand that, that I don't have a k value there. Now, what about the one to the right? I know it's going sideways, so I know that I'm going to be working with this formula. And because it's going, it's opening to the left, I know that my a is going to be what? If my a has to be less than 0, it's going to be a negative 1 because it's going to be only a 1 or a negative 1. And I notice it shift over 4 spots. So would that 4 be my h or my k? You're used to right and left being your h, but in this case, it's going to be my what? It's correct. It's my k. So this would give me this equation. Now, it also gives you the option to check this. Okay, so now let's look at how they check this. So it says the parabola passes through the points 5, negative 4. So we're going to check the equation when x is 5 and see will y equals 4. So we're simply just plugging it in. And I plugged it in and got a true statement, so I know that, yes, my answer is correct. And then we did the same here. I know it's going to pass through 0, 4. So I'm going to check the equation, and I see that again, yes, it is correct. So I want you to do the 2 at the bottom, just like you did the 2 at the top. Now let's go to the next page. Okay, so here they want us to find the working equation for each parabola by finding the h, the k, and the a. So first we're going to identify the vertex as my hk. So I can see that my vertex here is going to be a negative 1 and a 3. So I'm going to write the equation in vertex form. But I'm going to leave the a as unknown because I don't know the a. I know what my h is and I know what my k is. 
So because I know what my H and my K is, I can now use, plug those into my formula and use a point on my graph to find the A that I don't have. And what that means is, if I have any X and Y, I can find the other value. So if I have an X here and a Y here, all that's missing is my A. So if I find a point on my line, which they're giving me, they're giving me my B, I can plug in my X and my Y because I've already plugged in my H and my K, and I can solve to find out what my A is. So in this case, I know 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that gives me 4A minus 1. So then I just solve it like a regular equation and find out that my A is 1 half. Okay, let's do one together. Okay, I want you to actually see me work this problem, so I moved it around to give us a little working space. So I know that I have my vertex, and I know that I have my point B, correct? So I'm going to write the equation that I know that I have. So I know I'm going to have x equals a, y minus 3. Okay, I didn't mean to put 3 there. That should have been a y minus what? Because it's going side to side, is that my H or is that my K? That's correct, it's my K. So that's going to be a K here squared plus an H. So now I'm going to plug in those points. So I know my H and K is a 6 and a 5. So I'm going to have a y minus 5 squared plus 6. And then I'm going to have my x. Well, I have an x and a y here. So I know that I'm going to have 0 equals a 3 minus 5 squared plus 6, right? So if I use order of operations to solve this, I have a negative 2 squared plus 6. So that's going to give me four a plus six equals zero. Take my six to the other side. I'm going to have negative six equals four a, and then if I divide both sides by four, I'm going to have a equals negative six over four, which reduces to what? Negative three over two, which is the same as saying negative 1.5. So when I rewrite my equation, I'm going to have x equals, I know my a now is negative 1.5, negative 1.5, and then I'm just going to go back and write it like this because I know what, what my a is. It's going to be y minus 5 squared plus 6. Now let's work one more of those. Okay, remember if you weren't done with that, just pause your video. So now, I want to find, I'm going to work C now. So now I know I want to find again what my equation is. And I have my vertex and I have my point B. Well now because it's opening up and down, I know that I'm going to use which formula? It's going to be the one you're used to, which is Y equals A, X minus H squared plus K. So I know that my HK is my vertex. So I know this is my H and this is my K. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my HK. But I also know that this is my X and this is my Y. So you can plug them all four in at the same time. So I know my Y is going to be four. I'm trying to solve for my A. My X is one. My H is a negative two. And then my K is a negative seven. So if I solve this using order of operations, I'm going to have 1 plus 2, which is 3, squared, which is 9. That's going to give me 9a minus 7. So if I take my 7 over to the other side, I have 9a equals 11. And that's going to give me a equals 11 divided by 9. So now that I know my a, I'm just going to go back and write it in this equation here. So that's going to give me y equals 11 over 9. What's my x? It's just going to be x plus 2 because this one, and, I mean this negative and negative is going to make it plus 2. 
and it's going to be square minus 7. So that is my equation. Okay, let's take a look at number three here. Okay, so looking at number three, we have two different parabolas. But what the parabolas have in common are the vertex as well as a point. So I have my vertex that they share, and I have a point that they share. So I want to first find the equation for the parabola that opens down. So right now we're going to focus on this parabola here. So because it opens down, I know that I'm going to use what equation? The one that you're familiar with. We're going to use y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And remember, this is my, let me erase that there. This is my HK. And this is my XY. So I really have three equals A, which I'm trying to find, X, which is 2, minus a negative 2, squared plus 5. So that really gives me three equals. This negative 2 is going to make that 4. 4 squared is 16. That's going to be 16a plus 5. And if I take that over, I'm going to get 8. You could have said it. I'm going to get negative 2 equals 16a. Now I have to divide by 16, and I'm going to get a equals what? Negative 2 over 16, which is the same as 1 over 8. So if I want to rewrite that equation, I'm just going to say y equals negative 1 over 8. x, I'm still going to put minus my h, which is minus a negative 2, which is plus 2 squared, and then plus my k, which is 5. And so I'm going to leave that there so you can see how different the other equation will be. Because now, because it's going side to side, I'm going to start with the equation x equals a y minus k squared plus h. Make sure you take good notes here, guys, because when I give you a task, I'm going to let you use this note sheet. So now I know that my x is 2 equals my a is what I'm trying to find. My y is 3 minus my k, which is 5 squared plus my h, which is going to be plus a negative 2. So that's going to give me 2 equals 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to get 4a minus 2. So when I take that 2 over, I'm going to get 4, so I get 4 equals 4a. So I know that a simply equals 1. So for this equation, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to have x equals, I don't have to put the 1 there, but you can, and I'm going to have y minus, what was my k? 5 squared, and then plus my h, which is minus 2, because it's a negative 2. So that is my equation for the one at the side. Okay, let's look at the next page. Now, the next page is just kind of going over rules about as far as whether it's a is going to be positive or negative, whether it's going to open up or down. So I want you to look over this, but this is exactly where we're going to pick up in class. So make sure you take good notes, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.